to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Father, bless us tonight. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching is, is um, really all the teachings that have been coming are preparing us. There is a mighty, there is a series I look forward to starting. But all of the series that have been coming on faith and all of these things, they are, they are preparatory teachings. Hallelujah. I told us that this year, I want, my goal is that our lives will be so impactful, so impactful in every area, hallelujah, that in this year you will carry the anointing of the Spirit in a way you have never carried. This year you will carry the wisdom of the Spirit, that there will be a testament in your life that the rain is falling, hallelujah. And to do that, we must be guided through strategic teachings strategic teachings now teachings are like like paint brushes you are able to the artist before a painting happens on a on the whole board and all of that the artist already has an idea of what he wants but he needs the medium of the brush and the colors and he begins to play out what is in his mind there is there is something in the mind of God for you in 2015. Hallelujah. And I'm just like an artist walking in partnership with the Holy Spirit to make sure that the exact picture that is in the mind of our Father will be made manifest in our life this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight's teaching is really going to challenge us. Um, And help us to be better people, more effective in every sense. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. Status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way to better day. We prophesy. That's what is happening to us in the spirit. Status is changing. It's no more decline. We're on our way. Turn to your neighbor and prophesy. Tell him my status is changing. Status is changing. Listen to me. There is nobody who ever won the Olympics by mistake. Are you getting me? Those illusions do not exist. Every dimension of success, be it spiritual, be it financial, in every sense is strategic and intentional. Hallelujah. Nobody, nobody, nobody 
there is no successful person who cannot show you the formula who cannot show you the pathway he followed hallelujah you may not you may not see the full picture right now but brothers and sisters let me tell you it will not take long there is a kind of grace that when you sit under it implicates you it will not take long something will burst open it's like you are blowing a balloon you know how you keep blowing a balloon a time comes it doesn't matter what it is it just cannot take it and i perceive in my spirit that we're getting to that point i've been singing this song it's not a special number sometimes some songs help you articulate seasons 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 hallelujah i sleep with this song i wake up with it is my prayer and i know that there are certain people some mantles have long waited for you you see and and there are there are shoes that many of us will step into you will be amazed i hope you know that i'm not a politician when i stand to speak i'm not this is not a manifesto this is a communication of what the spirit is saying there are certain levels of graces that people will step into just know this brothers and sisters there is no mistake about success at any level there is no mistake there is no mistake hallelujah praise the lord please pray in one minute and say lord no distraction tonight give me such an unusual ability to listen an unusual ability to be focused inside and outside even if you have to sit on the fence even if you have to stand don't worry just pay your price now only a foolish athlete complains during the times of discipline only a failure looks for comfort during the time of training the bible says there's no man that worried who will entangle himself with civilian affairs humble yourself and submit yourself to the dealings of the spirit and see how mighty you will become i don't care what the limitations are take your eyes away from them hallelujah now i want you to sing this song as a prophecy sing it to yourself I'm on my way. Listen, nobody in your family may have crossed that line before. But as far as you know, God is leading you. There is a path. It says, There is a path which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Some of you, as ordinary as you look, just let the word of God finish its course in your life. I'm on my way on my way i'm on my way to better day no matter what the failure has been no matter what the limitations are prophesy challenge your fears I'm on my talk to you the man who wrote this song do you know how the song came about he was blind are you hearing me he was blind and one time a doctor looked at him and said this is your condition I can do something about it and he was surprised you mean my eyes can open and he began to pray and talk to the Lord and the Holy Spirit told him the meaning of that is that your status is about to change yeah that's how he wrote the song he was not just a musician that so this can change that once upon a time everybody looks at you in your family and thinks you are just one of those bunch of failures but you come up from another route that no man has seen and you tell them i may look small now 
but there is a hand that is holding me i may have made all kinds of mistakes in the past it's easy to judge me by my mistakes of the past but there is a hand holding me it's true that jesus died but he only died for three days he didn't die forever while others were talking about his death he had already resurrected status is changing there's no more decline on my way that the doors that refuse to open to you must open in this season no more decline father in the name of jesus take us higher we are praying this from the depths of our heart take every one person from glory to glory from grace to grace from grace to grace from grace to grace hallelujah hallelujah i'm led to lead you in just one prayer say lord make me successful i don't know if you've ever prayed that prayers pray it not for your neighbor just say it make me don't say i want to be successful that's not a wise prayer make me please just pray whether you understand what i'm saying or not just follow what we're doing take your eyes away from what you are not take your eyes just say lord make me successful by every standard we're on our way on our way we're on our way to paradise Hallelujah. 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 Seven years ago, I said this. These were my exact words. I said, We will all be successful. And the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. Seven years ago. I said this and I have not stopped saying it. This is a revolution. You may not look like it. But let me tell you, don't play games with the Holy Spirit. Once he holds you, he will make a wonder. He turned the lives of ordinary men. Forget about what men are saying about you. My Bible is full of the archives of the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Some of us ladies may be standing here. You look weak. You look like a failure. Forget about it. Just let my God, the one that can pick a man from a dunghill, pick a man from a dunghill. One more time. Say, Lord, make me successful. Against all odds, Kapala Kataya, when all is said and done, I will be standing. Some of you have been named like Jabez. That all you've brought to those around you is sorrow. But don't give up. Don't give up. It doesn't take long. In spite of the limitations. 
I may not know what to do, but I submit myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's get to the business of tonight. The training may be hard today, but you will thank me tomorrow. Believe me. This is it's not it's not a way that has just been discovered. It's always been there. But the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. It doesn't matter what is wrong. Just pay attention to God. Give him time and see what he will make out of your life. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching really more as a life coach, if I would put it that way. I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies, and I want to challenge us. The focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions, but then um, my talk is to everybody, but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year. Say amen. amen. So before we start, all the gentlemen rise. Aside from our elders, prof, please sit down. But every gentleman rise. Don't laugh. Rise. We are not playing games, please. The teaching has started. If you are not sure what you are, stand up. Hallelujah. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I will be successful. Regardless of where I am now. Regardless of what I do not know now. I make up my mind that my world will celebrate me. I refuse to fail. It's a decision that I've made. I refuse to fail. I declare that my family, my sphere of influence, and God will be proud of me. God bless you. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Please, everybody write. Especially the men. Whether you are standing, even if you are sitting on a tree, get a piece of paper this night and write. You now, I've told us when you come, especially for those of us who are new, please get a good notebook or something um, make sure you are writing one of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life please listen carefully pay attention the dynamic nature of life life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions Everybody say transitions. Um, in, in biology or primary science, they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects, right? It starts from what? Egg, lava. Some of you got zero. You still will get zero today after many years. From egg, some of you are saying adult. How can it be that? Hmm? And so we see that there are what? Transitions. And at every stage, the rule is different. Hallelujah. At every stage. Now, for us humans, there are phases of transitions. You start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood, right? And then you get into teenage. And from teenage, people say young adult. I, I've, I've told you my position in those things. I don't believe... An adult is anybody who is not a child. Whether you are young or old is irrelevant. Adults and from adults, 
it continues like that and at the end of your life you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity so one of the challenges watch this and i truly thank god for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry what i call a balanced growth my obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of christ right i attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of christ maybe it's because of the apostolic office but i hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other right so i don't want to raise people who are spiritual tongue-talking people but are broke failures in life and on the other hand i don't want to raise people who will build houses be mighty people and go to hellfire are you getting me i don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married the father looks at you and says young man what is your name say my name is, is christian say huh what, what what difference does that make what are you here for he say i saw a flower i say you a flower where you know but there are essentials that if we do not address you see part of the spirit of leadership not just being a man of god leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives are you following me now if i go to a congregation where i'm talking to professionals there is my approach my examples right and my communications become different if i'm teaching in a children's class you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest you are, you are spoiling those children you're supposed to be teaching them how to press into god you know all of that and you cannot be talking to um say grand people of 70 80 years and you are talking to them and you know saying certain things so part of leadership and and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are as, who are answering questions nobody is asking so while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the spirit is doing we must also be able to transit the body of christ the church is an institution right an institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies and part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year among other things is to trust god that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of jesus but then just just prophesying and saying the name of jesus be successful is a mirage you've done it for years nothing happened success is not an impartation there is nowhere in the bible where you impart success you can you can receive impartation of wisdom you can impart all of this but the bible says they are life to those who find them not to those who wish praise the lord are we there 13 verse 11 not 1 11 when i was a child that means when i was at a season of my life called childhood are you following me now certain things happened in my life at that point number one i did what my conversations were childish i spoke like a child and and nobody you don't rebuke a child if we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say say something and he says i want sweet you can't flog him he's speaking as a child that is the reality within his age range and it helps us know that the child is correct if you call a little child and looks at you and says where is my wife automatically you know he has been watching nonsense either house helps or people have have have, have raped his mind and transited him to realms that is not supposed to have gotten there are you getting what i'm saying now so there are seasons i speak like a child so you know a child first by conversation second 
I understood mindset. I had the mentality of a child. My understanding was childish. Some group of um, some of my little children in this place, they always come to hug me after service. So they wrote me a letter. They all came together, wrote different letters and gave me. And I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter. And these children will not let me rest. So today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service. If you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here. You are going to, we are carrying you to where? A place where we we'll go and play or even Father Christmas or Father February or Father whatever is coming here. They will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my sweet? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that the car is coming. So I understood like a child. Right? Number three, I thought like a child. So those things, are they characterize certain seasons. But then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known that that little boy playing around? You see that? See the guys? See some of you touching your face and saying, this is beard. Am I joking? When did he? Welcome to transition. I remember... I remember when I, was, when I was in secondary school, I think it was just one or two. There were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so, they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then these guys, you look like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abi. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure he's um, a nice Barbie in this and make sure he's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are Barbie, they say, what? Well, just, just keep lowering it. You don't even know what. You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say start. Start. Whatever it looks like as you proceed, I'll tell you whatever adjustments you make. Some of you even finish Barbie and they say, Cab, say Cab, what difference does it make? Carving transitions. Are you following me now? Now, whether you like it or not, you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free. And then when you transit and forget you have grown. What you said yesterday and people kept quiet. You say it tomorrow and they will slap you. Is that true? Because a transition has happened. A mistake you made and God kept quiet as if he didn't see it. You make it two years later you will pay for it dearly. So our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring 
is what I want to share very briefly. There are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives. Never forget these five areas. Number one is your spiritual life. The first area you must focus your spiritual life. Talks about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your passion about the things of God. Your passion about the house of God. Your passion about spiritual activities. Your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, it will start messing up your life. Now, look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink hey, once in a while smoking? I only saw him smoke once. Ah, but it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. It's, it's a non negotiable index. To measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again. And filled with the Holy Spirit and serious with God. With traceable evidences of transformation. Traceable. Traceable. You, you, not, you, can't, you can't say you love God and then we can't see the sign. God is not a... God is not a herbalist. You love God, you've worked with him, there must be a traceable evidence. Number two, finance. Everybody say finance. All the men say finance. Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God, but they are broke. Is not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a red sea in front of you. Right? The red sea. Is, and that red sea now is, is, is not red sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a red sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? Say, what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really? What did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. 
There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over the order, hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good, right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy, I like the guy. What of you, what do you think? Whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in, born again or not born again. Are you seeing now transition? So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden, the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transition. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50, there's at least four or five wicked people. They have, they've been, your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, Right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that he insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care. If you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four. Very quickly. Your career or your professional life. You must pay attention to it. Or generally speaking your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you are a liability in your workplace. 
you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention as you transit, even in this season. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations, you can impact people, you can leave a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance where we are anointed, we are casting out devils, but then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen, any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader. When that happens, bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You'll be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong thing. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she da, 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 da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure.
Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. On my way to better day. Please write very quickly. Why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Right. Why? The reasons. Reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason. There is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything, and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you, she says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around, be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older, but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons. To understand the demands, the responsibilities. Lack of mental transition. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 said, When I was a child, spoke like a child, understood like a child, and he said, I thought like a child. 
But then he said something. He said, now that I am a man, what happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally, to match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindsets. And there are three aspects we'll deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh, God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time. Dependency mentality because although it is scriptural, can I have one gentleman? Come, my brother. If this guy is my son, watch this. If this guy is my son, I have a scriptural injunction, right? As a father to take care of him. Is that true? To take care of him, to make sure that he eats well, make sure he loves God and all the responsibilities. But as the transition begins to occur in his life, this child is now becoming an adult. Is that true? That means that there must be a transition. But by the time this gentleman is 30 years, 25 years, and he's still having a dependency mentality. That's why we have so many men. They are married, but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do. Because the they transition happened, but in their minds, they didn't transit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mommy, what do I cook for him today? He said, what did you cook yesterday? He said, say, Mom. He said, oh yeah, try Gary today. See that? So, that inability to stand, to an extent, brothers and sisters, there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents' house. I'm not talking of a large compound with many houses. Because the man cannot do anything. Mommy prepares a room for him. He now carries his wife. Later on, the wife is pregnant. She gives birth. And they are all here. It's a terrible thing. It's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, dependency mentality. They were giving you pocket money. Maybe 5,000, 10,000 per month. And now you graduate. And five years after graduation, you start frowning at your father. He doesn't understand why the bad look has happened. Because... He expected that you would have realized. They gave you scholarship. You were blowing it. Buying books. Buying, uh, buying boots. Buying trainers. Buying everything. After all, my father, he gave birth to me. Right? And now you are finished and your father says, um, I think you should be considering moving. Say, moving to where? Is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that. Shame on many young people because although they are old, we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit. You see a lady, ah, I like this lady. And where are you? What are your plans? That transition, dependency mentality. Hallelujah. To an extent that you see a young man, some of you are looking at me as I'm talking to you now. You are in this category. You are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say popsy yeah can you transfer something to me and he says okay things are not going on i say it's, it's always like that you're always and you cut the call and you are raking and your mediocre friends are massaging say calm down please calm down calm down you know old people with this their thing and your mother is crying on phone at home and say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not even this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you, 
The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working, but still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, Mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who, everywhere you go, when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say, well, he's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, please, John is not around. He says, ah, are you not John? He says, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't, learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people and when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, mommy. She looks at the husband and says, daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to jail. One, five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates, you never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do just step into people's rooms and when they see you coming they say lock the door lock the door this parasite is coming your life is not supposed to be that way hey, hey look hold on please i hope as we are laughing we are listening your life is not supposed to be like that a parasitic life everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality you never have the opportunity to manage situations you have headache. You are running around expecting everybody to say, you, you see that, and, and the ugly part is when it happens for men. It makes, it's okay if it happens for women. But a matured man and another matured man, oh boy, sorry, oh, you have headache. What is that? Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. Mommy, where are you? Come and take me to the hospital. You are 30 years. Dependency mentality. So that's what happens. When that kind of man gets married, his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities. Dependency. No food at home. Eh? So what? No food. That's it now. They sack a man from work. Ten years later, he has not gotten another job. And he doesn't care. He said, what happened? You know the way Nigeria, railway corporation, that time we were working, railway? I was working in Nitel. I was working in this. And he's qualified. The CVs are there. Ah, you hear me this night. Bless you, please. Mindsets. Dependency mentality. You must get out of it. Do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody. Say, I am a blessing, not a parasite. Say it, I am a blessing, not a parasite. When you were small, when you visit your uncle, once you are going, they, 
they carry smarties and cornflakes and milk and bone bitter. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, ah. So they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I would ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government, it's not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many WAEC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do expo in jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we are still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oh God, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria? There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize. There is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? 
Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family. Now I'm not, of course, you know we pray. Next week is miracle service. Right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you, it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? Yes. See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable. Because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, a, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, all of you in your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance your own lack of understanding of submission you just rubbed it in the whole picture and say we are we are we are all we are all there's no marriage coming it's like that this is our family self that's why you find out that after prayers after healing after deliverance some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life someone owes you making your success happen someone owes you making your life are you getting my point that that mentality the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being is an entitlement mentality we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors every time we're mentioning the things that make us fail we never talk about ourselves we never say our contribution to the equation hallelujah um elijah why did you slap shay i slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence and this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk i'm watching you i'm coming for you you see we never say, look, I got this wrong. I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something. There is my outlook about life. There is my perspective. It's ego stinging to come to a point where you accept. But that is the point of true liberty. Are you getting what I'm saying? I begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused. 
my father only gave me the cow wouldn't I be married by now an entitlement mentality I begged my father for jam money he refused to give me though I have not written the jam let me fail but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands please hear me koinonia I am speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you must quit that that entitlement mentality from today some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and saying I'm disappointed I asked you for 5,000 you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know I respect you as my mother but I'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning when I no cook ah, you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you that's the entitlement mentality pastor Jake Zabek I feel get something from you he said no what for and you're hungry entitlement that's why you see in many churches there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony oh God gave me three million and somebody is waiting for them immediately after the service say well done sir your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life and it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? And eh, Nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um... I just came to meet you, Kai. Foodstuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Foodstuff has finished. And you say, um, so how can I help you now? Say, I need like 30. 30 will do me. Look at he's He's seeking help from somebody. And he's coming with a childish, right? Entitlement mentality. There are some of us who... And that's the danger. The danger there is when somebody starts helping you, it almost becomes like a right. Have you seen people that came to our homes or our families? They were trained. Parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. You see a man and his wife, maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month right very soon they start complaining i've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband ah what did you expect i noticed the way she puts food for my own husband you are squatting in somebody's house entitlement mentality my uncle gave me a job in this company how can i be in this company my uncle is there and i'm not one of the directors my uncle, Uncle Solomon, that grew up in our boys' quarters, I cooked for him. So what? So what? You come late, they've put a circular in, in, your, in your reception desk. Resume work by 6.30, you come by 10. You've done that for three years. They didn't, um, they didn't promote you. Your uncle has done everything to lift you. And you are not cooperating yet. Entitlement mentality. How many people have we hated innocently in life? 
How many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality? To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's God speaking to us. Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you and it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, Miracle Service. And they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone. But it's, I wanted to show all of you, I wanted us to project it here, our old six Massacre 2009 crusade, crusade photo. I really would love us to have that. I think we can walk. I have it in my email. Eh? Get me a laptop with internet and I'll transfer it. Yes. I want you to see it. One day we'll come up. We have the video. I think we have the video of our 2007 crusade. You will see all of us there. You see Victor, the head of department of protocol. They all held firewood on their head. Hey, oh. That's what the song they were singing and jumping. Hey, oh. And you see us so lean looking like, like whatever. transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me i was serving the lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know Praise the Lord. One last mentality. Mediocre mentality. Mediocre mentality. Mediocre mentality. We're still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres. And I'm, I've just touched on number one. Medio mentalities, mindsets really. Mediocre mentality. What is a mediocre mentality? Is the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal. It's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven. It's a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We're happy. We're a simple, nice family church. We are happy this guy has been there for the past 10 years we are there we are not doing anything we are not letting anybody know what God we are happy we are okay like that there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army Rising up, and they will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Kingdom 
advancement kingdom advancement is tied to one word influence one word influence without influence there is no kingdom advancement i want you to know that when the church is quiet in a society there is no influence and there is no advancement the church in nigeria is not quiet at all that's why we are involved in everything in this country the church nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world and forget about the errors here and there i tell you the church in nigeria is alive we have a say in everything from the executive government everybody knows in nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free influence i've studied revivals i've studied um technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what i'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there i teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong if koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members you imagine that we call that influence where one person represents a nation influence influence are you getting what i'm saying please don't ever reject influence in your life because god wants to give it to you it was through influence jesus was able to advance the kingdom the bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver it says in in matthew chapter 5 it says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth. You are not just a tongue talker. It calls you the salt of the earth. It calls you the light of the world. And it says you are a city. Not like a city. Not a village. You are a city. Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small. Souls are saved because of the influence. Destinies are changed because of the influence. During the retreat, media people told us the targets that they want on Facebook and the rest. And I told them, go for it. We are going all the way for it. Let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage in nigeria if one person owned a television station is that true television station i remember that time you own a television station they tell you every kind of thing and god said come on where are those apostles and men and women started rising 2005 the lord revealed to me that there will be 37 christian stations in nigeria and today how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus. But imagine that you put it on and, and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song. Whether you like it or not, you must buy it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You must make your presence known. Is the, is, the, is, is the principle of dominion. Part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory. Then they will adopt your ideologies. Then they will embrace your convictions. If there are, if there are hundred millionaires, I'm not talking of one million, real millionaires in this place, I guarantee you, your spheres of influence will. I, something happened, I think... Um, I went one of our ladies here she's she's technically my account officer with one of the banks and um, and uh, we're going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said I should get back into banking with them and all of that 
and then eventually I went she had prepared everything when I got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before I know it I saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet I said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeting ah the man squared up and said oh, well done sir I told him I said this this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank look at her see that what does that mean promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job the influence of the kingdom I don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God I want you to know that the more you have results the more your words become powerful results add weight to your words results Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work, within a short time, when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined, you can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Sing one more time. There's an army. There's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way. I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. To break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8 when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal, fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment influence that is intentional as a means to an end it makes your words powerful you are able to speak hallelujah that's why we must speak into your life oh you will get the oil company job that devil will not stop you the, the, no there are the principles you will get it you will be wealthy you will be blessed the devil will be alive to see it I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. 
a weak congregation produces a weak man of God a weak ministry that has no voice I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next this useless man part of the noisemakers no that when you listen you say this is it I had one word and it changed me makala boko superiata You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything, small. I got my small degree. I read my thing. I don't even want anything. Let me just get, I got one teaching in one LEA school. I'm okay. 7,000 is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking remember let me always balance this i'm not talking of this carnal lustful affinity for the things of the world i'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention right the exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of god there was a time jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and pharisees the guys were angry they say they are not listening to us again. Ah, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason, I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly. So laziness everybody say laziness the second reason why people become failures in life is laziness there is this spirit of laziness that is upon many nigerians upon many young people an inertia a reluctance to move forward inactivity satisfied with their levels closely tied to laziness is the spirit of procrastination i would do it another day oh i would do it is it not savings i will save the money is it i will do it i will do it procrastination is a dangerous spirit pray for your destiny i will pray settle down begin to study in the unique area god has called you man of god study about church growth i will study one day 
until all your members leave and then you start getting angry at everybody all these people are you sure they didn't touch their hand go and touch it too if it's available like that hallelujah laziness there are many lazy people in Nigeria and the Bible talks a lot about laziness the Bible talks about laziness the moment you are lazy get set to beg you have signed an agreement with begging no matter who you are and I have found something with lazy people hate begging they hate begging they feel embarrassed don't worry just bring it bring it bring it I'll do it fast lazy people hate begging hallelujah sorry for the little distraction let's pray pray in tongues while i do this is that all right all right so go ahead and pray pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink it will sink down Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness. Inaction. Procrastination. That inertia. Refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. Say, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. You sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up. Round one waking is around four. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around nine. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. 
you wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it is one o'clock, you just yawn and stand up, and you sit down, you are lazy, and say, God, sleep. You will be poor, guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about, I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? You lie down and sleep. It brings a lot of things. Forgetfulness. You are 30 years, you forget about everything. Somebody says, I'm coming. He comes and he says, why are you here? He says, I said, I'm coming. He says, oh, I remember. He says, Abba, you are too young for that. Unnecessary sleep. When the night time, when you should wake up and study and pray. Some of us, people can be gisting. They can even lie down on your bed and wake up. You didn't know that anybody lay down there. Because you sleep and, and the sleep is so deep. You wake up and you are frowning. Ah, why did you wake me? It's a bad attitude. I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentleman. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life. One, two, anointing disappearing from your life. Wake up. Don't you know there is the mystery of the night time? Look at the prophets in the Bible. Look at men. Look, Job said, um, I mean, the psalmist said in the night time, during his time of meditation, when things are revealed to him, the night time is when great men get insights. It's the time where men of power travel in the spirit. Okay, it's, it's, it's true that you are tired. At least three, four or so. Wake up. Don't let your body cheat you. You need to drag it and say, no way. I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life. Who is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on that deep medic. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody, please don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny. I'm not telling you not to sleep. There are times I take out time to rest. But brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? 
you go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira and you wear and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira, is it your own? No, because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served. Do they take people who have not served? Did you go? Did you go? You see, ba, look at me. Many of us write a lot of prayer requests. Next week now, there will be another one. I, I, you know I kneel down to pray and I see it. Some of you is full scab. You write it and then you write, uh, please turn over. That means it has not finished. Oh, there's still some more. But the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it, you will need to take action? You see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Say I'm a child. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old, Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children, they say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you? If you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, What are you what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, Don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it. You now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all would not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. No, ah! no please. Oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man. Me, men. Look at my children. Me, men. The woman was saying, I said, Madam, I'm a man. No, please, this one that you are talking about men i see it's not every man that everybody blah 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 blah, blah. The woman started crying i said madam god is bringing a good yeah, okay you know how women talk okay well, let's see fear fear that's what has stopped some of us from being champion you are used to failing the day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded it says a lie don't play games with me 
Don't you know that the divine life, part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success. No matter how you have failed in life, hear me, I want you to believe that you can come back alive. Are you hearing me? Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. See, there is a, there is an, let me, let me use this slang, there is an, I don't send mentality, you have to give life and give people if you want to make it. Some of us are too careful. What will, what will Zuerar say now? What will mom, we are too careful. That, that, that excessive care is not, is not care unto faith. It's care unto doubt and it will kill you. There are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear. What if I capsize in a gutter? You have refused to learn. There are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things. God gave you opportunity to learn so many things. There's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. I said, Kai, me, please. I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses. And tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. Get up and in the name of Jesus, take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinone, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and saying, ah, I'm only in welfare department. Well, let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written. You cannot observe what you do not know. He said, Then, not before, not during, then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life, everybody knows that there is honor upon your life. Hallelujah. Longevity has a principle. Longevity. Influence has a principle. And he said in Matthew chapter 13 now, I think verse 11 or so, if I'm not mistaken, he said, it has been given unto you. Say it has been given unto me. One more time, it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom. It is on the strength of those mysteries 
that you will enjoy dominion. It is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life. Nobody will just come and bless you for nothing. When during our series, The Mysteries of the Kingdom, I teach on the law of exchange. And I told you nothing goes for nothing. Nothing goes for nothing. There is an exchange that must happen. Hallelujah. Very important. These are some of the reasons why people become failures in life. And part of this is working in our lives, one or two or more, or for some of us, even all of them. We are going to challenge, challenge the gates of failure and say in this season of the rain, I'm breaking out. No way. I won't remain like that. I won't pack where my father packed and become a failure. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me Rise up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight. These are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming. I need to prepare us. I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, you are leading me. Day by day, I keep rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying, pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer points, the five areas that you must focus on. Your spiritual life, financial life, family life, career life, relationship. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one. And say, Lord, I must excel in every one of these areas. Go ahead and pray. I excel in my spiritual life. I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. I'm on fire for God. Burning, burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. My home is a place of love a place of blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I'm an exceptional father an exceptional husband an exceptional leader pray 
an exceptional priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I gave you five reasons or four reasons why people become failures. Look, be sincere as we pray this prayer now. The media is helping us. You're going to see it here. When you see that there is any, any area that applies in your life, through the ministry of prayer, uproot it. There are mindsets that you know must change. Attack them in the place of prayer. Don't feel condemned, but don't keep quiet. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I refuse a dependency mentality. I refuse a dependency mentality. I am a giver. I am a blessing, not a liability. Koinonia pray. I refuse to give excuse for failure. I refuse to excuse failure. I refuse to explain failure in my life. Pray, 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 pray. Inside and outside, pray. Pray. This is a prophetic moment. This is about your destiny. Pray. Pray against the spirit of laziness. I refuse to be lazy. From today, I kill laziness. Procrastination. I cost it for my life. Prompt obedience. Prompt obedience. Pray. Pray against the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse the fear of failure, the fear of the future, the fear of the mockery of men. I refuse it. I... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.